Hi everyone, my name is Boo. Before I start, I have a quick announcement. You can skip ahead to the list if you don't care about the news and just want some game suggestions. I won't be offended. Anyways, I'm getting very close to 100 subscribers, which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of YouTube, but it's still huge for me. I'm really thankful for each and every one of you that has watched my videos, whether you subscribed or not. To celebrate this milestone and include you in it, I've decided to go Hollywood and make a Q&A video. Any questions you have for me in the comment section of this video will be answered. Even if nobody asks a single question, I just wanted to say thank you. With that out of the way, let's get to the fun stuff. In my last video, I talked about what to play if you want to turn your brain off. Playing those titles excessively though can actually be harmful in the long run. You see, it's clinically proven that too much chill gaming will actually smooth out your brain folds. You need to play games that will force you to use your head and the strategy genre is the perfect answer. These games force you to engage with many different things at once in order to succeed. Whether it's managing your empire or trying to find the best prices for trading, you'll always have something else going on besides your current objective. My name is Boo, and these are my 5 strategy games that will keep your brain from getting smooth. Enjoy! To kick off the list, we have an entry devoted to kicking the hinges off of doors. Door Kickers 2 is a top-down, tactics-based strategy game that gives you total control over anti-terrorism units and how they complete their missions. You can play as army rangers, the CIA, or the local militia of a fictional country. Each squad has different classes, weapons, and gear. You can customize every team member's loadout down to the ammunition type, so there is a lot of time to be spent just optimizing everyone's kit before even beginning a mission. It's important to consider many factors when picking characters and loadouts. Everything from engagement distances to civilian presence, the amount of locks on each door will affect what you bring for a mission. Some missions will see you have 8 soldiers trying to defuse bombs on a city block, while others will have a two-man team clearing an apartment full of hostiles. You can play single-player official maps, as well as a huge supply of workshop maps. If you want to play with friends, you can play any mission in multiplayer. The game just divides up the units between the players to use, so you have to work together to utilize all of the team's resources. As for what you do during the missions, you have control over everything a unit does. There are honestly too many things that you can do with a unit for me to cover in this video, so I'm just going to say you can do a lot of things with every single soldier you have. My only possible complaint about this game is that the dev support is not certain for the future, but the game is in such a fantastic state already that it doesn't really matter. It runs on everything, I've found no glitches or bugs in all of my playtime, and it has endless workshop content to play with once you're done with the official campaign. Last, but most importantly, is that this game does something that no other game can do. It gives the satisfaction of flawlessly executing a high-stakes tactical mission without needing to be a first-person shooter. Anyone looking for a strategy game that keeps you on your toes and gives you legitimate control over everything you do should go check out Door Kickers 2. Second on the list is a franchise that has been a flagship of the strategy genre for decades, and that is the Civilization series. Since this series is so massive, I'll be generalizing some concepts and mechanics with an emphasis on the more recent entries, so please get off my back if I mention a feature that's not present in 1999. The gist of the Civ games is that you're responsible for leading your nation through the ages of human history and developing into a powerful empire. You have a plethora of famous leaders to pick from when deciding who to play as. Each leader and nation have unique bonuses towards certain playstyles, so there's a benefit in having a plan before the game even starts. The games are turn-based 4x games that utilize tiles. The tiles act as spaces for cities and units to occupy and move through. They can have varied geographical traits and helpful resources. For example, a hills tile with sheep on it is great because it can provide things like money, production, and luxury goods to your empire. These games measure everything with numbers, so your ability to create world wonders or your odds to win battles comes down to your ability to increase the numerical values of certain entities. Another key part of the game is city management. Your cities will do whatever you want them to as long as you can ensure they have the resources needed. A city with a heavy investment in buildings like libraries and universities will be a large contributor to your technology research, whereas ones with factories and mines will be powerhouses of production. The length of a round typically takes 5-10 to 10 hours until one player reaches what is known as a victory condition. Common ones are domination, science, culture, and score. However, these conditions can change from game to game, so make sure that your efforts really are helping you win. The Civilization games are excellent for people looking for long-term planning opportunities in gaming, since planning ahead will create larger and larger advantages in the game. They're also great for people that want a, what I call, time hole type of game. These games can be wildly addictive and engaging, and you are able to put a lot of time into it. 
If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. It tells me that y'all appreciate the work I put into each and every video. Also, putting more effort into making videos helps distract me from how deep in the friend zone I am. Let's just get back to the list before I need to go to therapy. On a less pathetic note, we have our third entry in the form of Risk. An adaptation of the board game, Risk for PC has the strategical depth and planning of the tabletop version, but with the variety and speed that the new digital platform can provide. If you are unfamiliar with the rules, it can be summed up as, take every space in the map with your army. You gain more troops by holding higher amounts of territories, completely occupying a continent, and by cashing in territory cards. The second and third ways are what players will have to factor into their decisions during a turn. To start with the continents part, every map is broken up into different chunks of territory, known as continents. Capturing all of the territories on a continent will give you an increased number of troops to draft if you still hold that continent at the start of your next turn. Territory cards are earned by successfully capturing at least one territory during your attack phase. Once you have three of them, you might be able to cash them in for more troops, with that option and subsequent amount depending on the symbol shown on each card. There are two very different rule sets for these cards, and those two are fixed versus progressive. Fixed means that the same cards will always produce the same amount of troops. Progressive means the amount of troops given will increase every time a player trades in cards. This can lead to insanely high amounts of units on the boards and in the drafts. It's a preference thing, so one rule set isn't objectively wrong or inferior, so play how you want. Now come the downsides to this game. Of all the games I've ever talked about on my channel, this is by far the most predatory with microtransactions and free-to-play gimmicks. As a free-to-play game, it uses a lot of mobile game shop mechanics as well as locking some modes, modifiers, and other content behind the premium paywall. I played the free-only version and had fun, but you really should be aware of the amount of free-to-play elements that are here. Overall, despite the monetization being a huge complaint of mine, I still think Risk can be a fun board game to play online with your friends for free. Strategy games don't always involve moving your units around, and my fourth entry, Bloons Tower Defense 6, is a shining example of this design philosophy. In this entry the beloved franchise, you hold off the invasion of balloons with monkeys and other towers as your defense. I know, the name says everything you need to know about this game and the series as a whole. Also, I will be using monkeys and towers interchangeably here, so don't overthink it. In the gameplay, you place down your monkeys to pop the balloons, moving down a set path towards an exit. The variety of towers is perfect for this game, with all of them fitting niches that almost never overlap. You can have long-range monkeys, explosive monkeys, flying monkeys, supportive monkeys, etc, etc. Every layer of balloon that these monkeys pop, and every round that you survive, will give you cash. You can use this cash to buy more towers or upgrades for existing towers. Each tower has three upgrade paths to follow. You get fully locked out of one after starting the other two, so understand what you're giving up when you buy upgrades. After buying the third tier of one of the two remaining paths, the other one gets fully locked out again. This system may sound restrictive, but it's genuinely fantastic since it makes you think about each upgrade as well as allowing you to discover some really cool upgrade combinations. And if you survive long enough, there are some insane upgrades that you can unlock. Something new to the franchise in BTD6 is the hero system. Each game, you get one hero monkey that becomes stronger over time for free. You can choose which hero to bring to a game, so picking the right one for the strategy you want to use is pretty helpful. Like your monkeys, the balloons come in a wide variety. They all have different health, speed, and they possibly have special protections, so make sure to have monkeys that can handle each type. My one large complaint about the game comes from the price of unlocking new heroes and how it does incentivize player spending real money. This is the only time this issue is present in the game, so it's not too big of a deal, I just want to make sure you're aware of it. The maps you can play on have varying difficulty and themes, so there's something for everyone in that department. The mobile version is nearly identical to the PC version, so both are great platforms for this game. There's honestly so much more to talk about here, but then I wouldn't leave time for game 5. Go play BTD6, it's an absolute blast. Speaking of game 5, this spot belongs to This Merchant Life. This is less of a classic strategy game like Civilization or Risk, but it has a spot on this list because of what it asks the player to do. The strategic value of this game is on full display when you plot out optimal routes to meet deadlines or maximize profits, as well as the strategy present in the combat engagements. Also, full disclaimer that my gameplay is from the first 30 minutes of this game only. My 3 year old save file on my laptop did not transfer over to my PC, so what you're seeing right now is nowhere near the full scope of the game that I saw and played. The short summary of the game is that you're a merchant in a medieval kingdom that goes around trading at towns and interacting with the world. There are many random events that pop up, both in the towns and on the trail. 
How you respond to these events and opportunities has tangible effects on your skills, your wallet, and your cart. In the towns, you can buy and sell goods, hire security, buy cart upgrades, take on missions, and make friends with locals. These locals have different services and or advance the plot, so they're worth meeting. On the trail, you have to make choices like handling a bandit attack, stopping to rest, helping strangers, etc. This makes the transit phase its own interesting gameplay offering. Time passes in this game with every action, and travel times are fairly accurate for what you expect with a cart, so make sure to plan that out ahead of time and know how much time you have before a mission ends or before a price spike goes back to normal. The main way to play is the campaign mode, which has goals to meet, a neat story, and funny characters to meet as well. You have total control over how you meet each goal to advance the story, so you won't feel boxed in by this mechanic. There are more ways to play than the campaign, but I won't be diving into those today since my experience comes mostly from campaign. What you may be thinking is that this feels more like an RPG than a strategy game, but the RPG mechanics are a large reason for earning the spot on this list. It is very unique when compared to the other games I talked about, but it still offers strategic planning and logistical skills that any other strategy game does. It still focuses on balancing multiple aspects and decisions at once to achieve the larger goal, which is making that sweet, sweet dollar. This merchant life is great for people who want something different from their strategy games, and it's very easy to get addicted to. My first honorable mention for this video is Portal 2. Come on, it's Portal 2, I don't need to say much. I know it's a puzzle game, but I'm not making a list for that genre, so instead, I just wanted to make sure to include one of the greatest games ever made in one of my videos somewhere. My second honorable mention is Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, a Switch game similar to XCOM. Yes, it is a cartoony game exclusive to one console, which isn't my typical recommendation, but I threw it on here because it's just a fun game overall with a surprising amount of strategical depth. So I recommend it to any Switch users that want a really solid and fun strategy game. If you want more lists like this, or you have something to say about my video, let me know by leaving your honest thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.